once you really get down to talking to who you need to talk to and focusing on talking to one person, you can be a lot more specific with what exactly it is you're saying and the words that you use and even the products that you push. It's just so much more streamlined and so much easier, which is something you taught me. You're listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Gillis, copywriter, word magic maker, and owner of What Sarah Said. On this podcast, you'll feel empowered to show up online in a way that has you saying, that's so me. Let's get started. Welcome to the Copywriter On Call podcast. I am your host, Sarah Gillis, and I'm logging some on-call hours today with a client and friend of mine, Kelsey, who's the owner of Wonderfully Made Gifting Company. Kelsey, I'm so, so excited to have you here. You were one of my very first ever coaching clients. And over the course of a few months, we worked together on a lot of different things from leveling up your messaging to really kind of dreaming big for your business. And I'm so excited to have you here to just kind of talk about your story and your adventure. So welcome and thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk through some things with you. Yes. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. I would love for you to just kind of introduce yourself and share with our listeners a little bit about how we met. Like Sarah said, my name is Kelsey Bilo. I am the owner of Wonderfully Made Gifting Company where I create luxury gift boxes. So very Pinterest-esque and full of boutique type items. And it's something I started about three years ago. I knew I wanted to do something creative and also on the retail side saw a picture of a beautiful gift box and thought I could do that and (laughs) so I started doing it and as with most entrepreneurs you start doing it and you're like I have no idea what (laughs) (laughs) and I think that's not what induced us to each other but that's what has grown our relationship is then meeting in person I think you and I met over Instagram probably I think that's how we first connected for sure yeah Met on Instagram, you purchased a gift box from me, so you came and picked it up from my home, met you that way, and then, yeah, chatted about different business things, and you said, how would you like to be my first business coaching client? And I said, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> you also are responsible for all of the amazing gifts that my VIPs get, and mm-hmm. I've been on the client side as well as on the coach side. And I've got to say the experience that you provide and the gorgeous gifts that you provide are just flooring, not only me, but my clients often tell me, man, I'm so excited. I can't believe you took the time to take care of me in this way. So kudos to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's been quite the ride and having you as a coach for those couple months, was it two or two or three months was so needed. And I know we'll talk about that more later, but a little more about me is just personal things. I'm married to my husband, Amos, for our coming up on six years. And we have a daughter, Charlotte. She's turning three soon. And we also have another on the way due in mid-June. So wonderful. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you Um, live here at Sioux Falls like me. Yes, I live in Sioux Falls, born and raised, love it here. So tell me a little bit about what you were doing professionally before you started your gifting company. So I was an interior designer for a home building company here in Sioux Falls. My dad's home building company, so we do small to medium-sized residential homes is what we did. And I loved the design part of it. I loved the organizational part of it, but the atmosphere of a construction company just wasn't really my jam. So Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to run my own business someday. So kind of took the design part of my brain, the creative side and pushed it into a different box. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Pun intended. (laughs) Yeah, I love it. So tell me a little bit about how you showed up online before we started working together. Oh, man. When I first started, it was very sporadic. I didn't really have structure to what I was posting. But I was proud of myself for showing up and mm-hmm. posting as far as being like totally authentic and knowing my brand's voice, just knowing what to say and who I'm talking to 
that wasn't anything that I knew how to do or had the inspiration to do, I guess. I just showed up and would post pictures and not really have a structure to it. Yeah. And what about how you showed up in person, like as a representative, as an owner of your business, when you were connecting with new people in Sioux Falls, how did you feel as you were showing up in person? In person, of course, at first it was very intimidating, but then over time I got to feel much more comfortable with it and really getting to know my business and what exactly it is that my business does. Of course, I make luxury gift boxes, but what does that mean? Like, what am I actually selling? Figuring out what my brand's voice was definitely took a little bit after a while and probably after you and I did our coaching and you helped me kind of find my brand voice. That was definitely a big help. I was able to then show up more authentically and have conversations where I was just confident in what I was saying. And I could walk away not having that feeling of, oh, I should have said that or, oh, dang it, like I stumbled over my words or whatever soon was able to walk away feeling like nailed it or you know what Th take it or leave it I guess <laughs> yes. nope, I did everything I could and yep. now the ball's in your court right yeah. yeah yep I feel like when I've seen you interact with people in person they're always astounded by your product and the gorgeous product that you put together I think it was just a matter of trying to tell the story behind it, right? The heart of your business. Do you feel like you had an opportunity at the beginning to really share the story that was on your heart behind kind of the gorgeous product that you put out? Or do you feel like that story is continuing to evolve and that you're continuing to learn how best you can serve people in this way with these luxury gift boxes? Yes, it's definitely continuing to evolve. When I first started, it was, I make luxury gift boxes. And as with photographers or copywriters or whomever, you realize there's a lot of me, quote unquote me, out there. What makes me different? And that's where it starts to shift and you start to figure out how am I different? What is my story? And I'm still figuring out and actually the beginning of this year, this is my slow season. So it's been a huge time to kind of figure out what value am I bringing to people truly? I'm saving people a lot of time. I really push a lot to female business owners or at least really small businesses. I save them a lot of time. I save them a lot of energy, which we all want more of. So really leaning into that and then also implementing more of what the heart is behind my business, whether you're buying a gift box from me or you're consuming some of my content on social media, reading my blog, meeting me in person. What value, what am I inspiring? What do you walk away feeling from me or from my products? It's just been a very gradual and it continues to change, but I'm feeling better and better every month as far as what my brand is saying and what I'm saying through my brand. Yeah, I think initially it was, well, you have a gorgeous product, right? But it's more than just the box that people receive. It's the service that you're providing. And being able to tell that story has been a really beautiful thing to watch you do as you've kind of shared more and more of your heart to really be that person who shows that care and consideration. And I'm wondering if, Part of what was on your heart when it came to this idea that you had, I'm wondering if part of that is something that you had in you since you were little. Have you always been a gift giver at heart? Have you always wanted to show that kind of care and consideration to others? Yes, I love this question because, yes, I've always been the person that's like, I want to give gorgeous, well thought out gifts, but I'm also the average person who doesn't have time to do all of that. And so I'll be honest, I haven't always been a gift giver. And I wouldn't even say that's one of my love languages. The part of me that's pushed for this business was I want to make it easier for people to give memorable gifts. You definitely do that. You make it a lot easier. And the quality of the gift and the thought behind the gift is something that I never worry about because you're able to just ensure that everything is cared for. You're caring for me, but you're also caring for my clients. And 
it's just been a wonderful experience working with you. Yay. That makes me so happy to hear. All right. So let's flip back to the copy side of things. Let's talk about showing up online, especially when it comes to a copywriting point of view. So one of the first projects we kind of tackled was polishing up and kind of putting in your personality in your copy on your website. So let's talk about that process. What did that feel like to kind of finally have that voice present for your brand and feel more and more confident in that service that you provide? It felt amazing to uh, finally start to feel like I am talking. I'm the one talking in my business. I'm not taking other people's words or the voice of the person whose podcast or audiobook I was just listening to and putting their voice. Like everyone knows what Morgan Freeman's voice sounds like. And if you have his voice in your head, you're going to start writing like Morgan Freeman would talk or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a silly example, but I finally felt like it was my voice talking through my website. So yeah, it felt really good. 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 And on the other side of it, I mean, you were able to kind of work through some exercises and identify that ideal client. And I mean, you were talking a little bit about that in terms of female business owners, mostly solopreneurs, but it took you a while to kind of figure out that was your ideal client because you serve, you're able to serve a lot of different folks, many of whom are shopping for gifts. So tell me a little bit about the ideal client discovery process with me. So it's a very intimidating process. <laughs> you yeah. Know, it, well, I can serve so many different people and I have a wide variety of people who order from me, but you need to know, and, and you kind of drilled it into me, like you need to know the one person you're talking to. Like, well, I don't want to just talk to one person. I want to talk to 5,000 people. <laughs> right. So it's super, super intimidating getting to that point. And I still struggle with it. I mean, you'll see different posts of mine where it's like, Hey, does your sister have a birthday coming up? I'm not really talking to female business owners with that post. And there's, you know, there's flexibility around different things. But yeah, definitely an intimidating process. But once you really get down to talking to who you need to talk to and focusing on talking to one person, you can be a lot more specific with what exactly it is you're saying and the words that you use and even the products that you push, it's just so much more streamlined and so much easier, which is something you taught me. Yeah, I love that. I think, I mean, we all have our bread and butter services, right? And yours are kind of those recurring clients that continue to come to you and say, I have another new client, I need to send a gift, right? Clients like me, but you also are able to serve clients who just want to show that appreciation to their people. And whether that's their sister who has a birthday or someone that, you know, walks into their business, I think that the ability for you to have that bread and butter service, that recurring client, but also those one-time clients who just want to surprise and delight, that's such good growth for any business, right? The opportunity to serve multiple different customers. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I love that. All right, so let's talk specifically about kind of the custom gifting service. We had talked about, you know, kind of how you are putting together boxes for clients like me who want to show some love to their VIP clients. This was one of the pages that you really struggled with on your website at the beginning because it's a complex process and it's different for everybody, right? And so this at the end of the day is a really important part of your business. So let's talk about what it took to kind of get to that point where you were happy with that copy and it felt like you. First of all, when I first started working with you, I was still figuring out. I had started this business about a year, year and a half before, and I was still figuring out what does this custom gifting look like? How do you structure it so it's good for the client, but also works well for me on my end and is profitable and all that stuff. So you pushed me to figure it out, but I had to figure out what is, what does that look like? What is this process? So then I can confidently write about it. That was a whole part of it was figuring that out, which it's really, really good to have that push sometimes, or a lot of times from someone else to be like, you need to figure this out. So I was able to figure that out. And then once I kind of knew 
what that process was, I felt like it became a lot easier to communicate through the copy, what this is, who it's for, what the minimums are, all that stuff, and say it confidently and not just throw out random numbers and words trying to sell it to someone. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think from a profitability standpoint and from a system standpoint, they all have to work together and the copy is just part of that, right? And so I think that once we figured out, okay, this is the inquiry process. This is how I want to funnel people through my website, through my business. And this is the process and procedure for designing a box or bringing in custom items. I think that once that process really, you did that hard work of figuring it out, everything really unfolded from there. Yep. This episode is brought to you by Story Sale, my three month group coaching program that supports creatives just like you who are ready to market their magic. Over our three months together, you'll have access to 12 group coaching calls, plus two guest expert calls. You'll receive Voxer support from me, one-on-one intensives with me to focus on your website copy, your SEO, and your email marketing, and a whole lot more. Story sale is a good fit for you if you love the work you do as a business owner, but you're stuck in a cycle of serving less than ideal clients who just don't light you up. Story sale is a good fit if you're frustrated with the direction your business is going, but the radio silence when you promote your offers makes you feel like you are the reason your business isn't succeeding. Now let's talk about what's possible for you inside Story Sale. What if you could stop relying on your portfolio to convey your impact in favor of connecting to your ideal client through words? What if you could stop looking at your competition's website to see how they portray their value in favor of trusting your own story to move your business forward? And what if you could stop building your business on property that you don't own, like Instagram, and create a website that sells for you consistently instead? If you're tired of playing it safe with your marketing, charging less than your service is worth, and feeling alone and uninspired in your work, then Story Sale is for you. Visit whatsarahsaid.com slash coaching or click the link in the show notes to learn more. I would love to see you inside. What do you feel like about your website that has you thinking, oh, that is so me. That is exactly who I am. I have a lot of confidence in the wording of my custom gifting page. Most of my website is not super copy heavy, but the about page and then the custom gifting page are the two that have a lot of words to them. And once I got the custom gifting page completed, And in my voice, talking to most of the people that come to the custom gifting page are business owners. And a lot of times they're actually like more corporate, like the large hospitals in town and the large real estate companies, things like that. So being able to feel confident in what my small self, you tell yourself like, it's just me. But what I'm saying to these large companies, just feeling confident in what's being said and also, but feeling like if they met me in person, they would recognize, oh, she's the one who wrote the copy. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important to have it sound like you and feel like you so that when they do eventually meet you in person, because you're very involved in local organizations and especially when you're serving local clients. When they do meet you in person, you don't want it to feel like, oh, wait, where's that person I was reading about online? I think that's a really wonderful thing that you are able to do is just show up authentically online in stories, on Instagram, but also in your website copy. And so they're getting that same Kelsey, that Kelsey that you are inside. So I love that. All right. So business coaching is a lot of things, right? And we've talked about a lot of businessy things that we learned and that we worked on. I mean, we've spent time talking through email marketing and we spent time talking through things like how to price for profitability. But sometimes business coaching involves things that are not even remotely related to business. So let's talk about that confidence piece because I think that that's a big part of being a business owner. How has having a coach on your side, by your side, helped you to develop that confidence, not only as a business owner, but just in general? 
I would say the biggest thing for me and a lot of solopreneurs, entrepreneurs would agree when it's just you, you don't have a lot of direction. You might think you do because it's your business, but there's a lot of hats that you have to wear and they're all wanting to be worn at the same time. So when I hired you on as a business coach, there was just this massive sigh of relief to kind of have someone else telling me what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I quit my full-time job so I wouldn't have a boss. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay to have a boss. For a yeah. So that was, that was probably the biggest thing was, yeah, just having someone kind of tell you what to do. Like, okay, this week we're going to focus on newsletters and how you show up there. This week we're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. That felt really, really good. As far as showing up confidently, that all kind of fed into it where what you're working towards and you know that, okay, I've made huge strides in my newsletter. I've made huge strides on my website. Instead of just taking little chunks here and there and not really feeling confident and not entirely thinking or knowing that you're doing it right. So that just really builds up someone's confidence when they have that direction and kind of a to-do list of things that you can actually complete and know that you had good instruction on. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great. I did the same thing when I left my full-time job. I'm like, all right, I'm my own boss. And then I'm like, where's a coach? I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's such a funny thing. We love yeah. being in the driver's seat, but we definitely don't like being alone. And I think that having someone to walk by your side is a really valuable thing, especially when you are trying to figure out how you want to scale and grow and how you want to take your business to that next level and dream big. Yes. Yep. For sure. I think that I would love to have you share a little bit about what you think a person who's feeling nervous about hiring a business coach, what you would you say to them about the opportunity to work with someone like that? I think I would fall back again onto what I was saying about it can be really lonely and you can not, not entirely know what direction you're going. You don't have a clear direction, clear to-do list, all those things. So if you feel that way, definitely get yourself a coach. My biggest tip for finding a coach, I feel like before I hired you, I had started considering getting a business coach and I thought all business coaches are the same. That's a title. But if you're looking into a business coach, really get to know them, literally interview them, find someone that you like and that makes you feel comfortable. All business coaches are experienced in different areas of business. There's very few that know everything. Actually, there's zero, not even the biggest <laughs> ones know everything. So think right down what you truly need help with in your business. For me, a huge part was copy work, my newsletter, social media, my website, all of that stuff. And I knew I just, I'm not a writer. I can't do it quickly and efficiently and keep a clear mind. So I knew I really needed help in those areas. And so then when you, a copywriter, approached me asking if I needed a business coach, I knew it would be a really good fit because those are areas that I really needed help in. Right. Whereas yeah. if I was looking for professional photography tips, I guess I'm not entirely sure about your photography background, but it, you don't want me to teach you that girl. Like probably wouldn't have been a good fit and I probably shouldn't hire you. So yeah, if that makes sense, that's kind of my tip is not all business coaches are equal. Mm -hmm. Find one you can interview, do your research, make a list of five or even 10 coaches and find the one that's best for you. Yeah. And honestly, different coaches are going to fit you best at different seasons of your business. Yes. There was a season of my business where I really wanted to bolster and improve my financial back end. And so I had a finance specific coach. There were moments where I really wanted to figure out how I could scale and grow my business. And so that was something I was looking for in a coach. And so I think that the opportunity to try someone on as a coach also is a really great message. And getting to know that person and their heart, I think that's a really key piece as well that I've really found valuable for myself. Yeah. Another tip I would say, and if, if it's possible for you, the listener, 
is to find someone local. At least me personally, and a lot of other solopreneurs, you're already working on your computer 24 seven, more than likely mm -hmm. you're by yourself most of the day. So that was also just a huge thing for me was meeting you in person, liking you in person. We would go to coffee shops. You gave me the option to meet over Zoom and I'm like, heck no, we're meeting in person. <laughs> I love that. Go to your coffee so, shop. so that, yeah, that was just super, super nice for me to have that one-on-one -on -one connection in person and then go home and get back on the computer. Yeah. And I mean, two heads together is better than one for sure. But even when you have that ability to put your heads together in person and work on the same computer <laughs> yep. or work on the same concepts together, it just levels up the experience even more. Yes. Yep. Okay. So my last question for you is tell me a little bit about the impact, right? So what kind of impact has coaching and copywriting had on your business, financial or otherwise? And I mean, you can speak to a lot of different types of changes and growth. You're coming off of a busy season with your holiday season, and now you're kind of exhaling and you're in a slower season. So I hope that you've been able to kind of think, okay, what kind of impact was I able to have on my clients, but also what kind of impacts was I able to see as a result of working together? For sure. Something I haven't mentioned with having you as a business coach, specifically on the copy side, you really helped me break everything down into bite-sized chunks. I would have an idea and I would want to write about that idea, but then you look at the idea and you say, well, there's actually like six pillars to this idea. So you can get six different content pieces out of them and really, really break it down and get even deeper for your customers, your viewers, your whomever. So that has been really, really big for me. I had never really done that. I would just take a big concept and not really dig deep. I would go wide, not deep. I think that's been really, really big for my business. Again, with really digging into who my brand is, what my voice is, what I offer, what my value is, all those things. Being able to dig deeper and deeper. And I feel every week, every month, I'm getting a little bit deeper and a little, it's getting a little easier yeah. at figuring out what I'm going to say. But I think that's been really big. For me, it's a sigh of relief to just be able to automatically dig into something like that and not question it so much. I think also for my customers, getting deeper into my gift designs and the specific occasion that they're for, getting deeper into my social media content or my newsletters, things like that, that's been a huge impact. And while I don't have financial statistics or anything associated directly with this, I have to believe that it's definitely helped financially to just connect with people. The more you connect with people on your product, on your social media, in person, the more they're going to want to support you. And then the more orders you get, the more clients you get, all the good things. Yeah. I think that you've done such a beautiful job of really putting out a cohesive message across all of your kind of digital footprint. And it's been such a joy to watch that message kind of evolve into this story that you're continuing to build upon as you go in and out of different seasons in your business, but in and out of different seasons of your life too. And I think that's the beauty of a really strong foundation is having the ability to let that story evolve, but remain true to who you are. And mm -hmm. that has been something that you've been clear on from the get go is who you are and what's on your heart. And I just can't thank you enough for sharing space with me, but also for trusting me to be your coach because it was an honestly a wonderful experience. Yes. And to anyone who's listening, Sarah is a wonderful, wonderful person. <laughs> a, you should get to know her in person. Reach out to her. Her DMs are open. She loves to meet with people. Sorry if I'm just talking for you, Sarah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> girl. Reach out to her. She is truly a wonderful person. And if while you're talking to her, you get on the subject of either business coaching or her doing your copy work for you, just get to know her and hopefully she'd be a super, super good fit for you because she is a wonderful person to work with. Thank you so much. Tell the people where they can learn more about your business and about what you do. I always am tempted to give people my phone number because I'm like, call me, text me. Like, I want to meet everyone. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Okay. So probably you, not on a podcast. You're probably not. You can 
reach me or find me on Instagram. My Instagram is at wonderfully made co co dot studio. And then my website is www.thewonderfullymadeco.com. So those are probably the two main places where I hang out on my website. I have a blog that I'm super active on and then I'm always active on Instagram. Yes. We will make sure that those links are in the show notes for everybody. And you'll want to sign up for her newsletter as well because yes, she loves to you. share the love with her people on the newsletter. From coupons to new releases, you will want to stay tuned for sure. Yes. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Thank you so much, Sarah. I am sending a big virtual hug to Kelsey for sharing her story with the Copywriter On Call podcast audience today. It has been such an honor to watch her business and her confidence blossom. Be sure to check out Wonderfully Made Gifting Company at thewonderfullymadeco.com or by clicking the link in the show notes. You can also follow along with Kelsey on Instagram at wonderfullymadeco.studio. The best things have happened in my business when I've stopped trying to do it all alone. And I want that for you too. If you want to change how you're approaching business, if you want an accountability partner, a support system, and a coach to push you to your potential, the time is now. I'd love to support you inside my group coaching program. Click the link in the show notes to learn more. And as always, thanks for listening. Until next time, this is your copywriter on call, signing off. Thanks for listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. If this episode has you feeling all sorts of inspired to show up as yourself online, click that subscribe button so you don't miss my stories or practical advice to help you express your quirky, vulnerable, and authentic self online. Chat soon.